Madam President, before I close, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to recognize a staffer of mine who will be retiring at the end of this work period. Lynn Churchman first came to work for me in 2007 to help out on the 2008 Farm Bill. After the bill passed, he headed back to the Farm Service Agency at the U.S. Department of Agriculture to serve as Assistant Deputy Administrator for Farm Programs. But I asked him back in 2011 to work with me on the 2012, which actually ended up being the 2014 Farm Bill, and he's been with me ever since. Madam President, I suppose it's possible that there's someone out there who knows the ins and outs of farm policy better than Lynn, but I've yet to meet that person. After working with Lynn in 2007 and 2008, I asked him back for the 2012 Farm Bill because I wanted the best for South Dakota's farmers and ranchers, and Lynn is the best. There's a reason for that. Lynn has an impressive farm policy resume on both the administrative and the legislative side. In addition to working for me, he worked for Senator Larry Pressler on the 1990 Farm Bill, and he has extensive experience in the executive branch of our government. He worked for the Farm Service Agency at the Department of Agriculture for years as a county executive director in Moody County, South Dakota, as a county executive director in Cass County, Nebraska, as a program specialist and later a branch chief, and then, as I mentioned, as assistant deputy administrator for farm programs. He also worked for the nonprofit Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership. But as impressive as his farm policy resume is, that's not all Lynn has brought to the table. Lynn often says, the best ideas for a farm bill come from a farm, not from behind a desk in Washington, D.C. And Lynn isn't just an agricultural policy expert. Lynn is a farmer not was a farmer, although he farmed a large spread for 15 years before going to work for the Department of Agriculture, but is a farmer. Lynn still owns and operates a corn and soybean farm near Platte, South Dakota. And so he has a deep insight into the challenges facing farmers and ranchers and how we can meet their needs here in Washington, D.C. Mr. President, I've talked a lot about Lynn's agricultural expertise. I've relied on it for almost a decade. And South Dakota farmers and ranchers are better off today because of the knowledge and insight that Lynn has brought to the table. But I also want to talk about Lynn personally. Every one of us here in the Senate wants smart and knowledgeable staffers. But in an ideal world, our staffers aren't just smart and knowledgeable. They also have the kind of character that Lynn displays. Dedicated, hardworking, cheerful, generous, humble, and unfailingly kind. He's the kind of public servant we all aim to be, and a gentleman in the very truest sense of the word. I'm not the only one who's going to miss Lynn. Every one of my staffers is going to miss him as well. He's been a mentor to many in the office, and perhaps more importantly, he's been supplying the staff with donuts every Friday for years. After a tough week, everyone looked forward to Lynn's Friday morning email letting them know that the Christie Creams were in the office. The donut notification email always included a list of things that Lynn was thankful for that week, whether it was the weather or the fact that South Dakota farmers had gotten all their soybeans in the ground. Lynn and his wife Mary were generous hosts as well, inviting staffers over for Easter egg hunts and cookouts. We'll miss other distinctly Lynn things, too, like his impressive cowboy boot collection or how he had to prevent him, <laughs> I should say, or how we had to prevent him from biking home in a torrential downpour. Lynn has logged more than 5,000 miles on his bike while working for me, traveling from his home in Alexandria to the Dirksen building on a daily basis. And, of course, everyone will miss Lynn's stories, like the one about the day that a younger Lynn tried to bring a rattlesnake home in a burlap bag. And as you can imagine, the snake did not appreciate the accommodation, so he got loose, slithering under the driver's seat of Lynn's car. Lynn's abrupt exit from the vehicle created quite a hazard that day, with the snake as the only occupant of the now driverless vehicle rolling down the gravel roads near his childhood home. And Mr. President, when I talk about missing Lynn, I also have to talk about the farmers and ranchers in my state who will miss having him here in Washington. More than once, 
Agricultural groups in South Dakota have asked Lynn to keynote their annual banquets. On one occasion, I offered to give the speech, but was told that Lynn was the preferred speaker. Mr. President, Lynn will be sorely missed, but he has more than earned his retirement. I know how much he is looking forward to spending more time with his wife, Mary, and with their five children and ten grandchildren. I know he and Mary plan to travel to Hawaii and Alaska, and that it's a goal of Lynn's to visit as many national parks as he possibly can. I know he will enjoy sitting, watching the waves with Mary at their house in Alabama, and of course, continuing to farm his corn and soybeans in South Dakota. Lynn, thank you for your service and your friendship. May God bless you in your retirement. Mr. President, I yield the floor.